how proud of you uh, Danny Stephan the second for committing to uh, to the University of Oklahoma. Yeah, time. about that. So uh, so Danny Stephan the second, he actually uh, changed Danny Stephan's alarms, and so I slept through a fall camp practice, <laughs> and Danny Stephan didn't play in the in the opener. Wow. We lost first Temple in the simulation because I'm Danny Stephan the second was a he's deep buried in the depth chart. Well, he's he's making his way up. Somehow the simulation lost against. Well, it lost against Tulane. And I said, "All right," and I deleted the app. I deleted it. De deleted the game, and so I'll, I'll come back in a few days. So not not great. Speaking about Tulane, y'all play against one of the best running backs in the country. Um, Makai Hughes had over 1,400 yards as a true freshman last year. What are you excited about uh, for that matchup, and what are you looking to take from it? Absolutely, you know, I love going against great players. Love going against the best, and obviously we're going to prepare the same way we do for everyone else. And just really excited to have the opportunity. You know, last time. Tulane was there. It was a great game. You know, it was a hot one. And uh, having Mario Williams come back, you know, that's like a brother to myself. And you know, seeing him back over there is gonna be exciting. And then if y'all beat Texas again, are you gonna make T-shirts again this year, or is that a one-time thing? Uh, probably not. You know, the sales might go up of my previous one, so I mean, that'd be that'd be great. <laughs> Danny, what's been the biggest thing you have been working on for your game this offseason? Yeah, you know, obviously with Coach V and me coming back, we kind of had a plan, you know, going into what I need to improve upon. You know, obviously, get block destruction is a huge one. You know, kind of improving in manzo coverage, another thing that's been worked on a ton. You know, and really just kind of just leadership overall. You know, just coming every single day as the same person. You know, helping this other group of guys. You know, improve and then just being one percent better. And will you and this defense have to change play style at all with the, the different offensive schemes you'll see in the SEC? I think we'll do whatever it takes to have us the most prepared for what it takes. You know, if coach sees us. An opportunity with a certain team where we need to you know, make a little modification here or there, then he definitely would do so. But I don't think we need to change exactly who we are. Danny, what's the biggest difference you see in this defense now versus when you arrived in the last year? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot more experience. There's a lot more confidence. You know, those guys are out there. They're sure of themselves what their job is. You know, and there's, you know, that, that just comes with time. You know, having guys like Billy, Woody, myself, and Ethan, you know, older guys all over the ball can really help those young guys. It really creates a lot, creates a lot of depth. For people, and it creates a sense of, uh, you know, we know what we're doing. You know, have a sense of savviness when we walk on that field. You know, and we we know what we're supposed to do. That linebacker room around you seems like there's a lot of guys that oh, yeah. could be getting a lot of playing time on the field. How, how the last few months have you seen everybody check out there? I'm proud. You know, when I look at that team of uh, since when they got on campus, you know, especially being the older guy now, I can look at everyone when they got to campus. You know, where they're at today. And it just puts a smile on my face, you know, seeing the work that we do every single day as a group, as a unit, and just seeing guys like a Lewis Carter or Sammy Amasigo come in and just see where, where they are today, dude, it makes me so happy. Those guys are going to be amazing players for the university. To see them, you know, see their growth and be able to part of that, I feel like a little proud dad in the sense of it. But I'm, I'm just excited for these group, man. You know, we can obviously have a really just have a rotation throughout the games. You know, any, any single player that comes in there, you're not going to see a drop in production. You know, the, all these guys can play amazing football at high levels. I'm really excited. You mentioned the same one hundred percent. You know, he's so such a natural ball player. And I think, you know, really trying to learn that system, you know, it took a, it takes a little time for all freshmen like it does. But now he's just a lot more comfortable, you know, playing a lot more fast. You know, there was times where he'd hesitate. And you know, now that he has that, that confidence, he's shooting a shot, making a lot of plays and it's just he's so natural in coverage and it's awesome to see. Hey, Danny, what kind of uh, progress have you seen from, sorry, what kind of progress have you seen from Jaron this offseason? Yeah, I mean Jaron obviously we all know he has the speed, he has all the physical stuff that it takes, and he's really taking that mental side to the next level. You know, there's no guy that works harder than Jaron Canick. You know, every single day he comes in there, first guy out, last well, first guy in, last guy out. But he's he's doing whatever study studying it takes. You know, soon as the week starts, me and him are up there on Monday morning. You know, knocking it all out to get a head start, and he's just always on top of it. You talked yeah, about how long the wait for the SEC. Now that it's almost here. Are you feeling emotions about it, or what kind of emotions are you feeling? I mean, we're excited, man. We've we've trained so much. You know, there's been a lot of talk. You know, have the opportunity to go out there and you know just prove who we are. You know, kind of the new conference. You know, like I said, and it's it's a great opportunity. You know, we're honored, we're blessed to be a part of that. You know, a lot of the reason why I came back. You know, I wanted to help be there and lead us into that new uh, new journey. Danny, obviously, you haven't started fall camp yet, but what kind of an ad do you think Dominic's going to be up front for you guys? That dude's legs are massive, man. It's like two of mine or one of his, and he's just he's going to be a great player for us, man. I think he's came in right away. It kind of takes a little bit, but now he's kind of you know, earned that respect in the group. You, know, you kind of look at him, you see a natural leader. You know, it's a guy that, you know, the system takes a second. Now he's trying, he's really starting to get it, you know, throughout the summer. He's taken every single day. He's kind of one of the helping, you know, lead the group, help those younger guys, and it's a great addition for that, for that defense. Danny, what you, what'd you see from Caden Royer in the spring coming over from Miami of Ohio? Yeah, he's, he's a big human, man, but his attitude's right. Every single time he shows up, man, you know he wants to be there. He loves the game of football. He loves the sport. He's going to do whatever it takes with Coach Chavis. You know, him and Ethan are always doing extra, helping those younger guys, but he's just, a, like I said, a leader, man. That's something that you can really define this defense. 
you know, they were going to bring three of us. You know, I think Coach V had the chance he'd bring the entire defense. And there were a lot of players on offense too, but it's just that experience that we've kind of earned. Yeah, you recently Texas quarterback when you were said that they are going to be everybody's biggest game in the SEC. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that, including yourself? I mean, maybe to a, to a set, to like a, a kind of a little bit. But you know, kind of every year, I, I, I don't. There's not many nights I don't think about you know that game. You know, it's just kind of how it is. You know, playing for Oklahoma. You know, they have a great roster over there, a great team. You know, they did a lot of great things last year. And so I think you know, kind of both of us going, both our teams going in the SEC, it's a big deal. And I think uh, he's not wrong by saying that. I think for Oklahoma, every single year, for both teams, that's what you look forward to. Danny, kind of bouncing off of that, uh, moving from the Big 12 to the SEC, what's something that you and the defense are looking forward to the most, most anticipating going into the SEC? I mean, just looking for the challenge, you know, definitely in the SEC, it's, it's one of the trenches, you know, having to get, you know, the front seven, you know, right is what it takes, you know, you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. And I think, you know, having that every single week, you know, having that intense challenge of who our opponent is and learning what we need to do, being how, seeing how we can be the most prepared every single week is a great opportunity. So when the playoffs come, you know, we're prepared. We've had a whole season of this, you know, it's not, nothing's new to us. What do you think, Chintra? Do you think Warren Down should be a penalty? Uh, no comment on that. I mean, it kind of just depends, you know, how it's used. You know, obviously, if you're in someone's face, you're going to throw a flag. But, you know, if it's off the side celebrating with just your teammates, then, I mean, I don't think it should be a problem. What do you think, Gentry? Williams brings to the table, and how has he kind of matured and, and improved as he's going into a class? Have you seen how fast that kid is? <laughs> you know, he brings, he brings speed, man. He could, he's a great coverage corner, and you know, he can do man or zone. And now he's kind of stepping into that leadership role. You know, like I said, we got a lot of new corners coming in. And so having him and Woody, you know, help a guy like Dez, you know, who just got into that program, got into the system, really helped them learn is just a veteran thing that you need from Gentry. Speaking of that system, year three under Brett Venable, just kind of talk about what we can expect from the student defense this year. Yeah, I mean, we're a lot more confident. You know, a lot of guys know what they're doing. You know, they have full faith that every single person from them is going to do their job. You know, at the end of the day, you got to do your 111. And I think, you know, sometimes we would do that very well. But there was a sense of inconsistency. And I think now we just need to eliminate those explosive plays. You know, obviously you got one third and fourth down. When we get to the red zone, we know we have to, you know, hunker down, you know, can't let them in. Danny, how have you accepted that leadership role this year heading into this season? Yeah, I mean, you know, accepting that leadership role started two years ago when I started seeing, you know, get, earning that starting role. You know, fortunately for, for me, it's an honor to be a you know, kind of two-year captain before. So that's already started. You know, every single day I wake up, you know, there's days where you know, I don't have the most energy to myself, but I know I, ha I know I have to be that vocal leader. So I have to force myself to you know, lead these other guys because the day I don't show up is the day that we get worse. So I have to wake up with the same sense of, you know, the same attitude, same confidence, and just be consistent every single day so the teammates around me can feed off that. And I think Coach Venables does an amazing job in instilling that in me. You see the same guy every single day. Danny, there's a lot of early reports that say Michael Hawkins looks great in practice. What are some of the things that he offers that maybe Jackson Arnold doesn't? I mean, you know, both guys are really great with their legs, can really extend plays. But, I mean, Jackson's a little bit quicker. I mean, you know, Mike's a little bit quicker. But, I mean, both quarterbacks are amazing. You know, the competition's great for Mike. You know, it's really helped it grow his game. And Jackson's really done an amazing job of kind of, you know, helping him learn the system. And it's, it's hard for a young quarterback, especially against our defense, to make those types of reads and see what he's seen. So Jackson's done an amazing job being a, a veteran, helping him, you know, kind of how DG was helping uh, Jackson and kind of do the same thing for Mike. Which one do you think is more difficult for you to go up to in practice just based on your skill set? I mean, it's hard to answer that. Both offer so many amazing, you know, amazing qualities. You know, Jackson can make a, any single throw on the field, but Mike, you know, can – He'll outrun you if you're not careful. We don't take the right angle, so it's hard to answer that question. Danny, Thank the you. Oklahoma brand is big already. Is the SEC going to elevate that at all? And do you feel how, how long is it going to take for you guys to be known as like an SEC program? I think we're already known as an SEC program. You know, it's it's on the jerseys, man. And I think that really helps our brand. You know, I think when you look at the Jordan SEC, the OU logo, it's amazing, man. It all comes together. You know, OU's OU, but now it's just gotten one step bigger. Yeah, you know, today I actually had the honor, like, kind of my first opportunity to work out with the offense. You know, we had defense a little bit later. And so I was kind of, I just wanted to sit back. You know, I wasn't as vocal as I usually was, just kind of see how the offense does it. And the first guy to say something was Jackson Arnold. Every single day I know that's how he is. And, you know, that really it, it kind of just, it was kind of a sense of security. Like, all right, this guy leads this offense. And, you know, being on the other side, I didn't really see that. But now waking up today, 6 a.m., he's the first guy in there getting everyone going, kind of being that motivation, that spark plug that the offense needs. You know, there's no doubt in my mind that he's not everything that we need. Danny, I mean, you get to practice against him a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah, I imagine he can spin pretty good. 
Oh, 100%. I mean, you guys saw the videos of the Eat 11 uh, camp. The man has a rocket on an arm, man, of an arm. And his talent and the way he can read a defense. I actually played him on Madden earlier. I, I killed him. But hopefully, <laughs> I think the defense part he struggled on. I didn't really know how to use her like, on the sticks. But, <laughs> but uh, he's a really good football player when the controller's not in his hands. Danny, the college football game came out, of course, on Monday, and Team Builder drops on Friday. So mm -hmm. where is Jimmy Green Beans going to be on your depth chart when you create him? Whew, that's a good question. Obviously, he's going to be a 99 overall, five-star out of, out of Kansas. I think every team's going to be offering a lot of money to get Jimmy Green Beans, maybe a few million. So hopefully I have the chance to you know, try and get him on a roster. But a guy like that, man, it's going to be tough. Did you just spend a lot of money on your son? And you commit, got him to commit? He was only a four-star, and I was able to get him for, like, two cheeseburgers and, like, a a chicken wrap, so it wasn't that it. bad, but he's what, buried in the depth chart. What is Jackson like off the field that we would never see? I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a goofy guy. I mean, he's kind of kind of like how DG was, you know, but at the same time, he's a great golfer. You know, he's, a, he's just really, really great man. He's just, he's awesome, really genuine with you. You know, for a guy that's had so much hype, you know, being a five-star quarterback out of, you know, out of Dallas, Texas, you'd think he'd have he's really cocky, he's very humble, very to himself, you know, but he's a great friend, great leader, you know, just a guy you always want to hang out with. Your first road game in the SEC comes at Auburn this season. How familiar are you with Auburn and Jordan Harris Stadium? What kind of challenges do you expect that game to present? Well, I've never played against them. Never played in that stadium, but uh, you know, I've already started watching film. You know, trying to you know learn as much as I can with that. You know, they have a very good running back, very explosive, very quick. You know, kind of a one-two punch. With those guys, and I know uh, kind of their system a little bit. But I just I can't wait for that week, man. I'm excited. You enter this season as one of the top linebackers. Wait, repeat your question. I'm sorry. Is there a venue in the SEC that you're Death Valley. I think every single person is going to say that. You know, I already know it's going to be a night game. It's going to be a, it's going to be electric, and just kind of stories I've heard from uh, t t teammates I've kind of played there in the past. You know, I know Dejon Terry played there, from, and so it's electric, and I'm just, I can't wait. You enter the we enter the SEC as one of the top linebackers in the nation. Just kind of talk about what we can expect from you as a linebacker. You know, defense has been one of the main things in the SEC. How are you going to help OU get to that point where they become a dominant defense in the SEC? I mean, I'm going to be a leader. You know, kind of what I do every single day. I'm going to be the same person. You know, I'm, I want to be the first one in. I want to be the first one out. Last one out. I'm so sorry. That's the second time I've done that mistake. <laughs> sorry. But, you know, really kind of be like a mini coach Venables. You know, when all the, the coaches can't be there constantly, I've, so far this summer, you know, past few years, I'm running the meetings. You know, I'm teaching those young guys, you know, getting the DBs ready, getting the secondary. You know, if a D lineman has questions, I want them to be able to come to me. They don't have to call Coach Bates uh, and kind of figure that thing out. I want to be a source, a resource for them. And you know, I want to have that knowledge where I'm a little, you know, kind of a defense coordinator when I'm on that field. You kind of said it, but how much have you heard about Tiger Stadium and LSU and, and going down there to play? A yeah, I've, I've heard it quite a bit today. You know, obviously it's a, it's a great venue. It's a great atmosphere. And uh, you love hostility. As a football player, a away game like that, you, you live for it. Really? Which running back is not fun to tackle? What did you say? Which running back is not fun to tackle? <laughs> On our team? Yes. I mean, thankfully, Tawi left. That was, that was, you saw the legs on that guy? Yeah. But um, Ameka's got to be up there. That's a guy that's kind of had a lot of injury. But you look at him, man, you're like, this guy is, should be a 99 overall in the video game because he's, he's built. But, you know, Gavin, Eric Gray was another guy that was so hard to tackle, man. He made me look silly. As a, as a young guy, like the moves he would break out of me. And you kind of look at, you know, Gavin Solchuk is kind of the same way with his, the way he's able to move and just put a foot in the ground and get, get north and south. And the cuts that he makes make it very difficult. Billy, do you remember your first reaction in 2021 when you found out who was going to the SEC? That was in 2021? Yeah, it was a while. <laughs> man, okay. Well, 2021 is when we lost Coach Riley. So, I mean, that was that took a lot, you know, big part of my mind. But... I mean, I was, I was excited, man. You know, that's something that you grow up, especially from Florida, you know, grow up around UF, you know, that's just a, an amazing opportunity. You know, it's always talked about as one of the greatest conferences, which I, I mean, I definitely agree with that. And I mean, I'm, I'm blessed to have the opportunity to finally, you know, kind of give it a go. Danny, what uh, the secondary behind you, just the stability of the secondary and also the stability of the coaching staff. I know Zach's new, but what's it been like having that stability in the secondary and the coaching staff, having the same coaches? Yeah, you know, kind of with our job being to do our 111th, I know those guys in the kind of behind me are going to fill a gap. You know, they, let's say I mess up, the safeties are going to make you right. That's kind of their job. You know, I have to correct the D-line, and they correct me. And, you know, having a guy like Billy Bowman, who's amazing. He's a generational athlete. You know, we need to offer 
him and Jada's children like ASAP when that <laughs> happens. But those kids are uh, the, the, all those cats in the secondary are made so much work. You know, with Coach Hall, Coach Fly have gotten that group so much better. And you look at the past, you know, where we struggled, and they've every single day are working to do what it takes to get better. And they have great leaders. You know, a guy like RJ stepping up. You know, kind of it's his year three now, so this is big for him, a great year for him, a good opportunity, and I'm just excited to see what those guys can do. Does PJ Otabore amaze you every day still? Have you seen that guy? Yeah. It's hard not to be amazed by him, but his personality is one of a kind. You know, it's a dude that we went skeet shooting the other day, and, and then we went to a, me and PJ and some other guys, we went to a PBR. That guy's horrified of guns and bull. It was, it was funny to see him in that, that sense, because when he steps on the field, he's an absolute monster, and he's a terror. But to see him outside of football, you know, kids, all right, this guy's human. You know, he gets, he gets scared around a big bull. But uh, he's, a, he's a generational athlete, you know, he's a, he's a freak of nature.